Hello and welcome to this week's Emerge 5, where we explore new tech, upcoming companies, common industry issues, and the brilliant people behind it all. Now, in this week's episode, we're going to be looking at startups that are using technology effectively to change the logistics game. And of course, please stick around to the end of the show for a special interview with our number one company. So, let's get started. Now kicking us off at number five, we have Eyard. So terminals move more than 750 million containers worldwide, which means that these massive operations come with inefficiencies that generate billions of additional cost to operators. Eyard has created a cloud-based technology solution that improves operators' productivity, reducing costs significantly. It helps reduce the number of unproductive moves by more than 25%, and it helps operators improve resource efficiency, which is exactly their goal to make sure the life and work of terminal operators and their teams are made simpler and easier, and to ensure that technology is here to help people, not replace them. Coming in at number four, we have Closelink. Closelink's mission is to provide a platform to the shipping industry for business-to-business -business commerce that provides procurement teams with the best possible market transparency and the highest degree of efficiency in a perfectly user-centric environment. They offer an easy, frictionless procurement process tailored to your needs and requirements. Also, they want to empower you with database insights for improved cost control and identification of business opportunities. And speaking of business opportunities, they can also extend your network by giving you access to a worldwide network of registered suppliers and purchasers. Coming in at number three, we have Nautix Technologies. The shipping industry is lagging in the adoption of technology in day-to-day -day operations. Nautix Technologies digitized the shipping industry to bring more safety to humans and efficiency to businesses. Their product is a task management SaaS application standardizing operations for ships, thus transforming risky chaos into structured safety. This allows teams to plan, track, and prioritize daily activities and collaborate in real time for making decisions faster, which means ships can have a task management application to manage high-risk operations better. And number two, we have Popo WMS. So Popo WMS is a cloud-based warehouse management system that optimizes every step of the internal logistic process. They go beyond inventory management and guide the warehouse employee through every step with an Android app. The warehouse employee uses the app to receive incoming goods, replenish storing positions, performing an optimal picking route inside the warehouse, and deliver the goods to the packing and dispatch positions. Their goal is to allow you to not only let you manage your inventory across all sales channels and IT systems that you might have, but also automate your warehouse management processes to ensure maximum efficiency. And for this week's number one, we have tracks. The road freight industry is the backbone of our economy, with the growing volume of goods transported by trucks. However, we're all aware of the big environmental challenge this poses, as the industry is responsible for roughly 6% of the European CO2 emissions. Now, where Trax comes into this is they are a German-based technology company pioneering the way the road freight industry adopts artificial intelligence to make informed, data-driven decisions. Their flagship product is designed to provide truck fleet operators with a holistic and comparative view of the fuel efficiency and CO2 emissions of their fleet, whilst providing suggestions, recommendations, and alarms to improve their bottom line. And joining me now, I have Jacob Muse, who is the founder and CEO of Trax. So, Jacob, welcome to the show, and thank you for coming on today. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. And uh, as I was just talking about in the intro there, it's a very exciting company that you guys are bringing to the forefront here and doing a lot of um, great work that really needs to be approached. And I wanted to get from, from your standpoint, whether you could explain to me basically CO2 emissions management and tracking and really why it's so difficult in transport. Um, CO2 emission management is difficult almost all sorts of fields, especially the so-called scope three emission management, which is the indirect emissions in a company. It's often in the supply chain, so a big part of it is in the supply chain. I think the latest numbers I saw was that on average, 85% of a company's CO2 emissions are in the supply chain. And in the supply chain, it can be many things, but one part of it is transport. 
that's where it becomes very difficult. First of all, the transport part of the supply chain is often very, very complex. But secondly, even if you know uh, how many ton kilometers were on the different modes, um, it is often uh, quite far away from the real numbers. And uh, that has something to do with the context where the transport happens. So everyone who has a car and wants to plan, uh, I go on holiday tomorrow, uh, I'm gonna spend this amount of fuel by going there, knows that it's extremely difficult to predict your consumption. So what you really need in order to measure CO2 in a precise manner is the primary data. And you can get that from airlines. Most airlines who, who do transport end up having a reporting on their bill where it says this was the amount of CO2 that exactly your load cost. Uh, it can go with a with a with an ocean liner. It goes from port to port, and you know how much it's been bunkering from in the one port and the other port. And you can sort of like, if you know how many tons were on board and how, how many of them were yours, you can sort of. Uh, calculate down. But the two modes of transport that are the most difficult to manage are then on the road mm -hmm. and on the river. And uh, if we look away from the river, it's still difficult. On the road, the reason why is that you have so many different players. Most fleets in Europe, for instance, 80% of the fleets in Europe have five trucks or less, and 90% of the fleets have 20 trucks or less. So there's a very fragmented market to get the primary data from. And secondly, what makes it more difficult is that they have so many stations. They don't go from port to port. They have like five pallets that start and then three gets off on the first stop and two new comes on and so on and so on. So the allocation of CO2 to the different products and the different customers is extremely difficult. Definitely, there's a lot of kind of factors going on there that need to be kind of thought about and be um, quantifiable in order to get those exact results, as you were saying. So I mentioned, obviously, in my intro, a very broad area of what Trax does, but it'd be great to hear from you. How is your company going to be tackling this issue? And really, what impact do you want to have on the industry? So what we're doing is basically we're streamlining the data flow from the seller of transport and uh, the data from the buyer of transport. We call him shipper. It's a huge system. It can also be a logistics service provider. It can also be a producer. Um, can also be a retailer. And so we combine the data uh, flow from both of them and we streamline it so that we can see by the shipper, we can see how much was driven uh, in by whom of your subcontractors. And we combine with the primary data of the subcontractor. And we can then go down to the each and every single product that has been transported and say, this was the amount of CO2 in the road freight part of the supply chain for that. Um, that is just the first step what we do. So we come very, very close to the real numbers, very precise numbers, where we don't have all the information, of course, we're modeling, but with the amount of data we have and the fact that we model from a non-rules-based method, we actually come very close to reality. So the second part is that we then know how did you drive? How did your uh, subcontractor drive? How much CO2 was spent? And how much could have been spent? So we actually create a context or a benchmark that we can compare. And mm. thereby we make decision uh, support for the shipper and for the carrier. So on how they collaboratively can lower the CO2 in their supply chain. So this is, this is like the basic way of how we do it. Excellent. Well, it's, it's an important um, <clears throat> element to kind of have in, in an organization and it's definitely something that is important moving forward in the future as this becomes so much more of um, an apparent issue for companies and it will as, as time moves on so it's a, it's a great service you guys are offering and Jacob I can only wish you guys the, the best of luck and uh, thank you very much for coming on today's episode. Thank you. Thanks Jacob. So there you have it. That's another wrap on another week's Emerge 5. Thank you very much for every company that we featured and all the fantastic work they're doing. And a big thank you to Jacob and Trax for that fantastic interview. We'll be back next week, of course, with another episode in our Emerge 5 series. Until then, please join the conversation at Ian360 on Twitter and LinkedIn. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. And of course, for more great daily content, please head on over to em360tech.com.